What is up, everyone? Happy Wednesday, December 29th. Uh, perhaps not for everyone. On today's show, Evan and I are going to talk about Cavs Pelicans, which was a basketball game that happened and potentially could have a lot of implications for the Cavs in not so good ways. We're going to talk about the return of Evan Mobley and the return of Darius Garland. That's all coming up today on Lockdown Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. <laughs> You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Before we get into today's show, I want to tell you that it is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is the new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions you don't want or need and can even negotiate better deals on those you want to keep. We also want to thank you for making Lockdown Cavs your first listen every day. Remember, we are free and available on all platforms that include YouTube. We're almost to 1,000. Go hit subscribe right now. Give us that belated Christmas present or you know do yourself a solid for 2022 and be a smarter Cavs fan by subscribing to us on YouTube. Evan, Cavs Pelicans happened. Cavs lose 108 to 104 because this is the COVID ball era and we are not going to like do our normal awards and things because I frankly think it feels pointless. And I think we've talked about this privately. I think it feels pointless to uh, put a bunch on these games. I I think we should just note off the top that we're recording this Wednesday morning. We do not know the extent of the Ricky Rubio injury. Now we will talk about that a little bit. Talk about that a little bit later in the show because we're going to do a live show Wednesday, 5 30 p.m. Come live. By then, we should know the extent of the Rubio injury. It may even break while we're recording this. Uh, we'll see kind of what the situation is. We'll talk about that in detail. All the follow up once we've had a little bit more time in the process um, and, and have some actual firm facts to work off of for that 5 30 live show. Again, go on YouTube, come watch, come hang out. It'll be a great time. Okay, Evan, the Cavs lose to the Pelicans 108 to 104. They led. 10:45, Rubio hits a three, and they lead until like, like four something minute, four and change left. If I remember correctly, and they lose, ran out of gas. It felt like Rubio goes down. Sales come out of it. Mobley's back in this game. Garland, this is the first game. Darius Garland is in COVID protocols. What what did this game like signify to you, if anything? Like, did you take anything from this? Um, it really signified the fact that, like Dave Zavak pointed out, the Cavs are outscoring teams like by 10.7 points per 100 possessions uh, when Darius Garland is on the floor. And I think they're being outscored by almost the same amount when Darius Garland is off the floor. There was a clear indicator at times last night that the Cavs really do need Darius Garland out there on a night-to-night basis, especially with Rubio being sidelined, possibly. I know I said it was a shoulder stinger in the lockdown now, recorded immediately after the injury, but I didn't watch the replay and realize it wasn't a knee injury at the time, but it just I thought he hit his shoulder hard. But... I don't feel optimistic about Rubio's outcome and future going forward with the team this season, but it, it became clear like it was a little foolhardy and from JB Bickerstaff to make Ru- Ricky Rubio play 37 minutes and also play a full bore every single possession in a meaningless game against the Pelicans because I think the Cavs have grown accustomed to having, and to quote Kobe Altman a little bit here, 48 minutes of elite point guard play. Because when Darius Garland's well, off, paraphrasing, he paraphrasing, goes on. not quoting. I know, paraphrasing, but Ricky Rubio's or Darius Garland's off, Ricky Rubio's on, and then they're on together, or they like JB. It gives him the ability to tinker and stinker a little bit this lineup, but you're really missing a clear in half of this offense, and also a large portion of the offensive production from Darius too. Like that's my biggest takeaway from this game is just like. The Cavs are already struggling without Darius. When he was announced, when it was announced he was sidelined due to COVID, it became clear that Rubio was like one of the most important players of the team just because they have no other offensive initiators, which people got really to see firsthand because Kevin Pangos just isn't an NBA caliber player, unfortunately to say. And they delete on Denzel Valentine to play point guard for them at points. I think they're going to see a lot of point of Coro and point Jetty as well. Like the Cavs are really need Darius Garland back with Rubio yeah. out. Well, and Jetty, and Jetty, who, clear is, as Jetty is, who is also in COVID protocols right now. So it's just like he could come uh, out like in the next few days, though. Is yeah, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but it's just like the yeah, yeah. CDC regulations. And I think the league is adopting those just to shorten the window and everything else, too. So yeah. it, it's tricky. So like you have to lean on all these different bodies. But it was already clear already to me that like the Cavs missed Darius. 
but they're really going to mysterious if Ricky suit sideline for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I, I think for me, it's just you look at COVID ball and you look at where we're at and this is just about survival. This is about like Did getting you see through. the Doc Rivers response to it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I've, <laughs> I don't want to. I agree with how Keith. I agree with Keith's line of questioning, but I appreciate Doc's. I don't like him saying it was a bullshit question or a stupid or dumbass question. Um, but Doc is right. Like there is no, like these are all NBA caliber players. Like there is no big win or big loss. Like Matt Moore said, these are just wins and losses right now because you're just trying to get through this. Yeah, this is to me just survival like this to me is just you're trying to get through this and like without garland i think like we sort of all can conceptualize what the Cavs are with him he's been one of the league's breakout stars this year he's been incredible and is the key to the whole offense functioning and it's like not only are you down him now probably rubio colin saxon obviously hasn't played in a while because of his own season ending injury like you're just down quite a few players at a key spot. And like the end of this game, the, the line that the Cavs ran at the end of this game was Denzel Valentine, Isaac Okoro, Dean Wade, Kevin Love, and Evan Mobley. That is like some sicko nutso offense you have to run. And you only have to, you, when you, when you run that, it is basically saying, Oh, we have no other options. We just have to like survive right now. And it, it wasn't pretty. It doesn't work. And like, you know, as you alluded to, Kevin Pangos not being uh, good was not good. That was certainly a problem for for them not being able to kind of make this work and kind of survive. And like where we go from here with all this is is to me very, it is very tricky in just how they survive this because like you know the the Eastern Conference is tightly packed. This is a team that has been very good this year. They deserve a lot of the praise they have. How they kind of can navigate games like this just becomes I think harder and like. This was a game that I think if you, you know, put the true serum into JB Bickerstaff and you put the true serum into the players and you put true serum into people in the organization, like this is a game you should win. I understand that like like you have the COVID situation, like it's Moby's first come back, like the 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 Rubio thing clearly took the wind out of the sails of not just like people watching the game, but I think the players on the floor and you could even feel like the broadcast, well, the like John was Michael leading their sales after like the first quarter when everyone yeah, was just hitting yeah. threes. Yeah. They came out really hot and then it was like, okay, we're going to survive to the end here. But then the Rubio thing was like Thanos snapping like the last of the will out of their bodies. And like, even John Michael was like, Oh boy, you could like feel it radiating off of him. And like, but this is a Pelicans team. Um, that didn't have obviously Zion Williams hasn't Sorry. played this year. I, I just thought of the old Pierre the Pelican mascot and JB like lodges Stormbreaker into it and Pierre just goes. You to should honestly the just like voodoo all that Pierre the Pelican. If, uh, apparently, it, like uh, it exists Fans somewhere. Like, bring him back. Well, apparently they should bring him back on Halloween. If we're being honest, just like terrify people. I'm for that. But like they don't have Brandon Ingram due to Achilles soreness. Like Garrett, this is like a game where like some weird things happen. Obviously, Garrett they Temple was five Josh and six Hart from either. Three. He was like yeah. the most improved player candidate. Garrett Temple was five of six from three. Herb Jones rocks. I love Herb Jones. You and his found Jones didn't even play well, but it, that, all that well considering. But like it was just a weird game, and you ran out of juice, and you like clearly have a ball handling shortage on this team. So like, yeah, man, I don't know what to do here. Like again, like you're also just surviving COVID stuff. Like Justin Anderson played 14 minutes. Like Denzel Valentine played 24 minutes. Pangos played nine and was bad, and you could tell that he only played two in the second half. Like you can tell that there's either he is still like if we want to be generous about it that he's still adjusting or that he's just not good enough. Like that that's just the, the reality here. And Rubio played 37 minutes, took 25 shots. That is 10 more than anyone else on the team marketed and was second in shot attempts at 15. Like. This is going to be a weird time as the Cavs navigate this. And, they're, you know, they will eventually, in theory, get back to some form of normalcy. But, like, this is the kind of game I think you lose when things are just bizarre and then things get bizarre yeah. in that game. But, Evan, after the break, uh, let's let's dive in specifically on Evan Mobley because he was back and I thought very, very good as he returned from his own stint in the COVID protocols. <laughs> uh, but first, you're going to tell everyone about our friends at Truebill. I will. Do you guys know why free trials renew without your consent? It's a business scam out to get you. Do not let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions today. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. 
and Truebill Concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. In fact, Truebill has saved over 2 million users and helped them save over $100 million combined. Do not fall for subscription scams yourself anymore. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you literally thousands a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Okay, Evan. Let's dive into Evan Mobley um, because he was pretty freaking good. And I, I think if there is a positive from this game, it's that Evan Mobley comes back and uh, looked like Evan Mobley for the most part. Yeah, no, he um, he really just picked up right where he let off, left off. I was worried there might be like a little bit of rust after being out for several games and just not being really allowed to be in contact or practice with the team. But 22 points on 9 to 12 shooting, super efficient. One to two from three is encouraging. He's taking three pointers still. Seven rebounds, no blocks in this one, but his rim defense and pressure was really felt. Um, this was his first time starting at the five for the Cavs in his career. Uh, he and LeBron both, two, one future great and one current great, great, starting at the five for the first time in their career. Uh, pretty fun stuff last night from Evan Mobley overall. So, yeah, man, if we were giving out awards, I mean, obviously Rubio would be like the player of the game pick, but Mo- Ru- Mobley would be my other pick. Like, he was just awesome. Or Kevin Love, too, because he was bombs away <laughs> from three. I, yeah, I think Mobley is just like very clearly – you see him come back and you see him return. And I think it is very clear how integrated into this team's DNA here it is. Like JB Bakerstaff was like, okay, even though like JB, there are some quirks with JB that I find sort of like old school, but like he will post up bigs. Like he tried to post up Kevin Love on Herb Jones. And I just like kind of cackle because I'm like, this doesn't make any, this like Herb Jones is like a rocks and B just like Kevin Love posting up hasn't been like a thing since Minnesota if we're, if we're keeping it real. Like there's no like argument that that's actually like good offense anymore. But like, Evan Mobley got some post-up opportunities where he's hitting like this little like one-legged fadeaway that goes in. And like you're just like, oh, Evan Mobley is just like an absolute star. And like defensively, it's like very interesting that they, you know, I think like Dean Wade in particular deserves credit for just like hustling and, and making it work and trying to persist and not like be a negative on that end of the floor as they're kind of playing these these weird lineups that really have never played together and have no chemistry and stuff. Do but you like the metric that Dean Wade is like one of the best. No, wings ab- no, play. no. Carter Rodriguez, if you watch games, would understand that. And like Dean Wade is a four whose masquerading is a three and is being propped up in a lot of ways by the fact that Dean Evan Wade has turned out around several times. Yeah, I, I uh, played the three in high school for a little bit, but I'm not really used to it. He's not a he's not a he's not a three. He's not a three. And he gives if you like want to have typical player talk saying, I'll give my best to help the team win. Yes. So. Yeah. And if we want to have the discussion, if he's like fifteen million dollars worse than Larry Markin, and I'm like willing to have that conversation at some point because I don't know if that's true, but like <laughs> wait, that's like, a conversation people are having that Dean Wade is better than Larry Markin. No, not better. That he's not fifteen million dollars worse than Larry Markin. Because of their contract difference, think about think about how much Lowry is making, and think about know. how much Dean Wade is I, I, making. I, I'm doing the math in my head. I understand what you're saying now. Thank you for, for listening. The thing with Evan Mobley is that I think you just put him in, and like you shore up a lot of problems now. And I and I actually think if we're looking, if we're looking at like the ways that this could, as things kind of return, Jared Allen could could be back soon. We'll see how this goes. Like again, like it's just everyone's going to deserve their own kind of time to figure some of this out. Mobley is just very clearly just like so baked into everything that they want to do and everything that makes this team sort of work that like, I'm like, even on offense, like when he's getting his shots, I'm like watching his shots on, on the other half of my screen right now. Like they're like, okay, Mobley is going to be like our release valve on the baseline. Like if we need to just like get, get the ball to him somewhere to maybe get a shot up. Like he seeing him also like do Deanne waiters arms, like the, put my arms up because I'm open was the first time I think I've ever seen him do that. And I thought that was interesting. The other thing that I liked, um, this happened, I think really just the once in the first quarter, but he got a creation rep and getting him reps to just like handle the ball and attack or run a pick and roll is cool. I love the trailing, uh, Justin Anderson hit him with it, but he hit that trail one three pointer. He hit was like a trailing three pointer where he was coming Mm -hmm. up late on the play and just as the top of the key, like, this was a game where, like, I think some of the stuff we saw from Evan Mobley as an offensive player was perha- like, I don't want to go as too far to, as to say it's like because he was playing center. I think it's some of it because of just like Jared Allen. Like, there's different ways you're going to use him when Jared Allen's on the floor or not. But like, yep. this is one of the reasons why like him at the five is so interesting. And like, 
I just want to put the ball in his hands more now. Like, if this is going to be a situation where the Cavs, like, even when Darius is back, I just think it's time to just, like, let's put the ball in his hands a little bit. Let's let him, like, create a little bit. Let's let him, like, run a pick and roll. Let's let him drive. Like, I, I just want to see it. Like, I just kind of want to see him get to do that stuff. And, like, I, I just, he comes back and it's like, oh, like, he's very clearly, like, maybe not the Cavs' best player right now, but this dude is going to be the Cavs' best player, like, in a year if this if this trajectory continues. Oh, yeah, his trajectory is insane. And again, I'm going to get a little sappy here. It makes me feel good that the NBA is in like a really good place. Um, Just because of how much young talent is just like up and coming in this league. Because like Jalen Green was exciting for Houston last night against the Lakers. Um, Kate Cunningham has just been awesome for the Pistons. Uh, Josh Kitty has been great for the Thunder. But like Evan Mobley truly is like one of one like i know people like to try and draw comparisons chris doesn't because he hates them but i hate player i i hate player comps mobley it's just like chris said watching it was more so the fact that the pelicans threw a trap i believe at rubio and he kicked the ball to mobley and mobley just caught the ball in stride and kept going and like initiated the offense and like looked really comfortable doing that i know he did a lot of that at usc last well, his year one year at USC because they didn't have a true point guard. So Evan Mobley kind of became the offensive hub and the de facto point guard for that Trojans team. I I think seeing him play with actual competent point guard play in terms of Garland and Rubio has really unlocked a lot of things for him. But I think the Cavs should really start to explore this playmaking aspect of his for sure. I absolutely agree. And I think like Chris alluded to using him as a trailer is also a really interesting thing too, because you didn't expect him to really take a lot of three pointers and make a lot of three pointers as well. But like his, his mechanics aren't broken. His shot looks fluid enough. It just needs a little bit of tweaking and work. And just so he feels more comfortable with the NBA three point range. But yeah, man, like the Cavs are in a good place. I've been high on Evan Mobley for a while. If you're a regular listener and Chris knows this too, like I was high on him heading into the draft and like, there's just something about him where you say like, okay, this guy could be the guy for the Cavs. And I think like Chris said, if he continues his trajectory, it's not going to be in a couple years. He's the guy he'll be the guy next year. And where he goes from here is interesting to me because I think if JB, I mean, JB is going to remain the coach for at least the next five years, unless he gets fired. All well, of a sudden. I, let's not say the next five years, because like that is like projecting like any NBA coach that can make it through a contract <laughs> extension, but that's what I said, unless he gets fired. So I want to see him mobile at a little bit of bulk, because if you throw him on like, Herb Jones, or if you th- like, he ends up posting out Valanciunas in the situation. And Valanciunas is a thick bodied center who can pretty much handle Evan Mobley, I'd say. But like, Mobley also realizes the limitations of it or physical limitations of his. And I think the diversity of his shot profile is just really fun to see. Like Chris said, like hitting that fader, you're like, okay, this kid's in his bag a little bit. Like, I want to see him kind of really create and get into his bag a lot more especially if this season starts to slope downwards with rubio out um yeah why not get weird with it why not let evan mobley explore and see what he can and can't do and see what his limitations are right now I, one of the clips i'm watching right now um was there's some mobile core i don't know if you remember this it was i believe the second quarter uh yeah or sorry early third quarter it's mobile core two main action mobley just kind of gets the ball and like just near like in the middle of the paint it was like off of a lot off of a lead rebound and he just like him in ok like he gets the ball okoro just dart okoro he feeds out to okoro on the side and then okoro just whips him back like an overhand pass maybe it was anderson i can't tell oh it's okoro and he just they just know what he just knows what to do he just like fills back in mm-hmm. and it's like okay i know i'm not gonna like body jonas valanciunas but i'm gonna the floater is just gonna be there for me it's just like he's he's incredible yeah, i so um saying, like he's realizing his physical limitations and still having a huge impact. The fact that he did on 75% shooting is also encouraging. Like, yeah, he if there's, get... if there's, if there's one area that we, we could say is like maybe holding him back from being like as good as we would sort of expect this year. It is, it is the offense has not been like as efficient as perhaps you would necessarily like for, for where he's going to eventually be. Yeah. But I also think that's just, it's hard to fully gauge that yeah. as well. Just with injuries, COVID, everything just happening all at the same time. Like this, I'm not trying to sound like a team PR person here, but it really does feel like this Cavs team cannot catch a break with certain positions. It just, you're like waiting for the other shoe to drop for something else to happen for them. 
yeah um you know fingers crossed for them that they can navigate this all right after the break we're going to talk about darius garland because uh that that's a bummer um and i'm going to throw a, i'm going to steal something from another very good nba podcast to throw it evan off the top and surprise him just to break his brain because he deserves it but anyway i'm going to tell everyone first about our friends at bet online bet online is the official betting partner of the locked on podcast network and they have you covered this whole season with more props odds and lines than ever before as football continues its march towards th- through the bowl season and through the pro football playoffs. They remain the number one spot for all sports action this season. Head to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you got to do is use the promo code Locked On to receive that bonus. From basketball to football to NHL to boxing to UFC, write your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season and into next year. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, so you don't want to take advantage. We'll wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. That's BetOnline, where the game starts. Use that promo code locked on to receive that bonus. Okay, Evan, I'm going to throw a hypothetical at you here with Darius Garland. We're going to go back to 2019, redraft that draft. This is I was something 27 that seven years old. Yeah, you were you were young. Looking at that draft, the 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 open floor podcast. This was a Rohan Nakarni and Michael Pina episode. Uh, Chris Hangers on the show. Very good show. Twenty nineteen draft. You're going to redraft it. Give what would your top like five be? Mm, I'd so go Zion one. Okay, I would go Jaw. I would go Ja one at this point. Really? Yeah, Jaw's a star, man. Just I just played. don't think Zion. If Zion doesn't end up in New Orleans, like if you're just throwing teams out of the way and just ranking talent, Zion is. I yeah, I just clear. have to. I'm gonna I'm gonna take what has happened in front of me and Jaw's number one and Zion's number two. But then I think Garland's certain... number three in this scenario, yep. though. I, like I RJ think Barrett's just three. Yeah. kind of been like RJ Barrett's been solid, but he hasn't been like he hasn't popped in his third season like Garland no. has. No, Garland's number three, and I think that says I just wanted to get that exercise away because I think it, it is illustrative that look the Cavs have a guy who is like clearly clearly very very good the straw that serves the drink if you will he is essential to everything that they are doing and like I don't know how they function with now that he's in COVID protocols and the league the league has changed where like depending on his symptoms depending on all of that he could be out in like six days so like it could be shorter than than we're expecting. We don't know. It's not fair to expect that he was like tweeting through this game last night, which is very funny. Um, Millennials, just those views. Um, There's the agency, I, or I don't know what the terms are anymore. Yeah, you're old. Um, and you're older than me, so I can I can say that. But I just like don't know how you how they will try to like. I don't think you can replace him, right? Like I I don't think there's any way like you can like at all. But I just don't know how they're going to even like. F- it's not like Memphis, like when Ja was out, where it's like, okay, Desmond Bain, and like we have Tyus Jones. Bro, and, like, that was the Cavs the had Rubio thing, saying the Grizzlies were better without Ja Morant. I'm like, yeah. y'all are dumb. It's yeah. like the people who are hesitant to trade for Ben Simmons because Ricky Rubio is shooting more threes. Like, okay. Anyways, we'll talk about that at a later time and date. That's yeah, a teaser I, for the live show. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're talking about Ben Simmons, but like, oh, I'll rant about it. You, I will let you cook like your Russell Westbrook, just chucking stuff up. Um, I don't know how the Cavs like function without Dar- like have a functional offense without Darius Garland. Well, I don't know. I don't like, against especially New Orleans Rubio. last night. It yeah, clear against New Orleans last night. It's like, like they yeah, can't it's function. Like, no, it's well. like okay, if Ricky Rubio, they, they, I don't think, I think like saying they can function is like even like generous because it's like it, there's times where it worked, but it's like because Ricky Rubio did Ricky Rubio stuff, and then you got some like really good stuff out of Evan Mobley, and you got like little stuff out of Okoro as a cutter and as a passer, and Kevin Love was like on fire to start this game, and it's like otherwise I'm just like, uh, I don't, I don't know how this like. I, I don't know how some of this is just going to work while while Garland is out. And like this is a this is a tricky stretch of games. If we're talking about like them surviving and like like Garland is probably the player I would say like they couldn't afford to lose. Like you can like you could argue Mobley, you could argue I think Allen, whatever. But like if you look at the schedule, while they're not gonna potentially have um one Darius Garland, let's just say he misses the next three games. Washington at Washington, at home on New Year's Eve against the against the Atlanta Hawks. And then home on Sunday against the Indiana Pacers. And then they're home Tuesday against the Memphis Grizzlies. 
I don't know if they would a single one of those games. That, Sorry, that, I punched my like, mic. Yeah, look, if they had the bingo card at home. Yeah, I punched my mic, but I just really don't think the Cavs win a single game, especially if Rubio, like again, worse. I'm assuming the worst because I'm a cynic, but it, maybe it's a jaw situation. He's able to bounce back. There's still the reality of the Cavs facing them where they have to play all those games without really a true point guard on their roster unless they make like an emergency 10 day signing. Somehow, yeah, I mean, somewhere. like, are they gonna, if they could get like Brad Wanamaker on a hardship or, or something like that to just like suffice for the next like 10 days, like, I don't think that's like a, that's like honestly what I would probably do at this point. Like I would probably trust like Brad Wanamaker or like someone of that. You know, Quinn, people had like me like Quinn Cook jokes. He's playing in Russia, if I remember correctly. So like I don't yeah. think that's like easy to get him back from from Russia and, and clear COVID protocols right now. Um, also, people are floating Gor- Goran Dragic because he's not a part of the Raptors' plans. And I went, oh, because he's making nineteen point four million this year. Yeah. So that that's a that's a note for me. Future Dallas Maverick Goran Dragic, but like. These next couple games are just going to be tough. This is a tricky part of the schedule. Like they're at Washington, home Atlanta, home Indiana, home Memphis, at Portland, at Golden State, at Sacramento, at Utah, at San Antonio, at OKC, who is friskier than you than you might realize. And then home versus yeah. Brooklyn, where Kyrie probably will be able to play, and at Chicago, home versus OKC. Like that's like the next month. But if you're looking at just like the next at least three, let's just say these next three games maybe four that that Darius is out. That's a really brutal stretch to not have him. And especially if this Rubio thing is as serious as we kind of expect, like this is just like, I don't the treading water. If, if treading water is the goal right now, right. If it is just like, mm-hmm. let's just survive this and be in good position and be in a spot to like, still kind of capitalize on where we're at. You could, you could pick like much, you could not pick a much like trickier schedule for the, for the Cleveland Cavaliers to navigate while these, while this is kind of going out. Like it is, like, let's just say I don't think you're going to get any, like, Raptors games where they're, like, winning by, like, 40, 45 points. That Raptors game is wonky stretch. because they had 12-ish players out of their rotation. Because Yeah, that, that, game was, that game was, like, a fake NBA. That game was a fake NBA game, if we're, if we're being honest. That was a scrimmage. Like, that was, like, a preseason game. Yeah, that, no that was... No disrespect to the Cavs. Like, they played great. But that was not a fair matchup. <laughs> yeah, that game was bonkers as hell. Um, Yeah, I TLDR, no Darius Garland is... Not going to be easy for the Cavs to navigate. I think the you saw their plan was very clearly give Ricky Rubio the keys to the world, and now you can't do that. Yeah, unfortunately. Did, is there any? Did, have you? Is there? I just want to. I feel like we have to ask this, and I. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I know he played well in the G League. Is there like anything? Um, is there anything about Pangos that like looked good to you? No, he. Just looks overwhelmed and out of sorts. I think he, I think I might have said it, but I regret saying it. But a lot of people who genuinely thought Kevin Pangos was a break glass in case of emergency, like if Rubio or Garland is down and well, or they I, here's, trade okay, Rubio. Here's, but here's the thing. I don't think that was like a, a take that like people should feel bad about because I think if you analyze what the Cavs did with him, it was we're going to go sign this older point guard from Europe to a multi-year deal that has nine guarantees in it. We're going to bring him over, right? We're going to bring him over. We're, we believe that he can persist in case like Rubio is hurt or we trade him. We have a backup here in place. I think that was clearly the belief in what he was going to be. And I don't want to like write him off now because he's played like a very few minutes and it's, there's a lot of reasons to believe that like it, the adjustment period isn't there, but it just, the early returns aren't good. And like, I, it's kind of clear that like JB, Played him se- again seven minutes in the first half, and then played him two in the second half, and did not go to him again when Ruby was out of the game. That is just telling. Like that is just yeah. telling on its face. Some of that is JB Bickerstaff coaching, like JB Bickerstaff does. Though he trusts, he leaves all the guys he trusts, and but, you know. But, but I'm saying that. But, but, but that tells you. Whatnot. But that tells you about Pangos. That tells you what he feels about Pangos. Yeah. No, it does. It absolutely does. Um, no, it, it, it's just it's tough, man. Like. I'm looking at the options right now. Like you said, Brad Wanamaker, like there's Jeff Teague. Maybe they go call up Yogi Ferrell because they have familiarity with him. People are floating Matthew Del Vadova, but he is currently playing in Australia, much like. Um, Did you see the clip of him getting nuked on a dunk, by the way? Oh, never mind. Yogi Delhi? Ferrell is playing in the ABA League. Well, did you but did you see the video of Delhi getting absolutely like dunked on in Australia and then a fight almost broke out after the dunk? No. No, I, I did not. I will, I, I will text this to you after we're recording because it's pretty good. 
it's pretty good. It's one of it's one of the best. Only the good. I like, only I like one of the few good scrap. So yeah. Well, it wasn't really That's even it. like him. He just got like dunked on, and then one of his teammates like tried to like do a fight. It was cool. Um, all right, I'm looking. I'm trying to pull up the spot rack because he was actually a free agent right now. 2021. Okay. Um, this is not what I wanted. Okay, this is not what I wanted. But anyway, find some. If they can find a cheap point guard, that would not be bad. Um, I, I'm sure maybe there's a G League guy they could go to. This is where like Brandon Knight would have like kind of been like it. Jeff Teague wouldn't be. Honestly, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like Jeff Teague would not be bad. So like the op- realistic options are are Brad Wanamaker, Jeff Teague, or Frank Mason from the G League because Frank Mason is on the South Bay Lakers right now. Yeah, um, I'm trying to see if... And, so, and also Frank Mason is 5'11". Yeah, I was going to say, is Cassius Winston for, you know, he's with the Wizards? Nope. A lot of uh, these, a lot of G League point guards got gobbled up in the last two days. Yeah, and again, this is not a long-term... Kyle season. Guy, who got yeah. signed by... Yeah, he's no, in a point yeah, guard, should, but... Yeah, that's actually, actually, well, but, like, is tall enough to play point guard and, like, yeah. uh, got a 10-day deal from... Because <laughs> that would have been the one. That would have probably been the one you just, like, pull him up and um he had covid i think last time there's there's he would have been the one even if he wouldn't have been like clearly better than like uh pangos necessarily but like probably a better shooter Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like he's there you know what i mean like he's just like oh this guy's in our backyard we'll just pull him has familiarity with the offensive system because Dan Gerard yeah. runs the same exact system and plays that the Cavs do. Yeah. Um, oh man, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be like Brad Wanamaker just like having to run like like. Truly, I just don't even like. I. I think I, Jeff Teague makes the most sense for a ten day option. Honestly, like T, he, I think if T, he wants to come T, here for ten days, maybe show he still has some NBA juice in him. And then he can sign to the contender or something, or if the Cavs keep him as like the veteran point guard off the bench and sign him for the remainder of the season, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Yeah, Tiger wanted me. I I don't. There's probably to me not like a real difference. Um, well, we'll see, man. Wanamaker is just younger. That's the only thing. Yeah. Um. I it, honestly, this is like a, I I wonder if just like how fast I can get, they could get to Cleveland would like be a would be a breaker. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, they're both free agents, so they're not doing anything right yeah, now. Yeah, but like in terms of like good. the ability to catch a flight or like get a car and like get like because Jeff Teagle was in Indiana, is like from Indianapolis, if I remember correctly. So like he could Jeff, like, and Wanamaker's from Philly, but last played for the Pacers. Maybe he's still in Indianapolis. Yeah, maybe maybe they're both just like whoever could whoever can drive from Indianapolis first could can start for the Cavs. It's like planes, trains, and automobiles. It's a good that's, race to Cleveland. Look, it's it's where we're at. It's bizarre. That's gonna be it though for this episode. Again, five thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're gonna go live on our YouTube. Go hit subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know. And we're gonna. Talk about Ricky Rubio. Mac Robinson coming in with the heater saying Jamal Crawford should be who the Cavs sign. No, that's an app. I love Mac. <laughs> that is one of the, that is any tag. Okay. Any tagged, any added him. That's just, that's just rookie shit for Mac. That is absolute rookie weirdo Twitter shit for Mac. And he deserves to be scolded for that. If we're being honest. Oh, never mind. Brad Wanamaker just signed at the Wizards. Anyway, Jeff Teague, come on down. Looking forward to the Atlanta Hawks jokes and him getting asked about that and me asking Brad Roland about about just rucking Brad's brain about Jeff Teague going up against the Cavs. The jokes I'm sure will be flowing if, if this if that happens. Anyway, that's gonna be it. We're gonna hit eject again. 5 30 p.m. Be here, be square. If you want a good second listen today, go check out Lockdown Bets. The uh, detailed deep dive into betting from the Lockdown Podcast Network from Lee Sterling and your boy Q. Go check that out. We'll be back later. Everyone, be well.